cease to be a spy until... When you're burned, you've got nothing. No cash, no credit, no job history. You're stuck in whatever city they decide to dump you in. Miami. You do whatever work comes your way. You rely on anyone who's still talking to you. A trigger-happy girlfriend. You shoot them. An old friend who used to inform on you to the FBI. You know, spies. Bunch of bitchy little girls. Family, too. Hey, is that your mom again? If you're desperate. Someone needs your help, Michael. And a down-and-out spy you met along the way. That's how we do it, people. Bottom line, as long as you're burned, you're not going anywhere. Grace got your brother. You ordered him to. Card's dead, Fee. Now we need a way out of here. There's a full tactical support team on site. Some heavy hitter seems to be running the show. You killed Tom Card, and your friends helped you escape. You are now enemies of the United States of America. No, I didn't betray my country. I was trying to protect him. I don't care. Riley has gone rogue. She sent a hit to you not for us. Drop it, Weston. Either you confess or we both die right now. I think it's time to make that call. It ends today. All right, all right. We've been here three weeks. How long does it take to, quote, sort out what happened? We were going to get out. In Panama, you said that we were done with all this. You said it would just be us. I needed to protect you. I needed to protect all of us. Michael, what have you done? I made a deal. You're done, pal. You give new meaning to the word despised. In addition to your impressive list of felonies, you just brought down one of the most respected CIA officers Langley ever produced. The CIA, the NSA, the NCTC, everybody, every intelligence organization is calling for your head on a pike, which means you get to look forward to spending the rest of your life in a dark hole. And not just you, Michael. See your friends there. You may be able to live out the rest of your days in a cold, concrete box, but do you really think they can? They're never going to see the sun again. In short, my friend, you're screwed. And guess what? It's your lucky day. Because I just happen to be in the market for someone just like you. <laughs> terrorist network based in the Dominican Republic. We need to get somebody close to this bastard, find out what he's up to, and take him down. Now, I have... Tr we've tried for years to get somebody close to him. But I 
think that you can succeed where others have failed. Because it turns out, you used to work with this son of a bitch back in the good old days. you've already set up a perfect cover ID by stabbing your old agency in the back and trying to blackmail your way out of it, and that's, that's exactly what I need. I need the old Michael Weston. From before the burn notice, before this extended Miami vacation, the Michael Weston, they got the job done no matter what. So do we have a deal? Cover job changes you in ways that are hard to describe. To become another man for months or years, it's impossible to go through and not be affected at the most basic level. In a way, that's the point. Deep cover is only used to go after the hardest targets, the ones who can't be approached, the ones who can see through the smooth lie, the ones who know the real thing when they see it. The only way in with a target like that is to become the real thing. Every hour, every day, whether you're in public or alone, you have to live the life of the man you're claiming to be. It creeps into your soul after a while. Spend enough time posing as an alcoholic ex-spy, committing the occasional crime to pay the rent, and the line between fiction and fact becomes blurry. Eventually, the question isn't whether the cover ID will attract the target. It's whether there'll be enough of you left to complete the mission when it does. This time, you fight for free. Is this about Marquez? Because if he's asking for more money, you're going to have to take out with him. <laughs> Been a long time. Burke. What the hell are you doing here? Enjoying the Santo Domingo sunshine. Looking up old friends. You okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. Good. Get into the hospital. Michael and I have some catching up to do, don't we? Randall Burke, what's it been, 10 years? Something like that. Most people, when they're looking to get back in touch, don't send guys with blades. Not from personally. Just wanted to see if you could still handle yourself. Why's that? I got a job coming up. I was hoping you might be right for it. Well, now you know. Maybe. Maybe not. Seems to me the last time we saw each other, I was dragging your ass out of a firefight in Dagestan. You remember that? Like it was yesterday, brother. I'm that same guy. Are you? <laughs> you see, the thing about that guy, Mike, is he had a fire inside. Back then, you were capable of things I didn't even know were possible. This guy? What are you? Been drunk before noon? Come on. Everybody hits us below patch now and then, but I'm still in the game. I took care of you two guys, didn't I? That never would have happened to the Michael I knew. But this? Oh, come on, it's a scratch. I'll tell you what. First job, half off. I'll call it the friends and family discount. It's not about the money, Mike. Well, then what's it about? Because I want a job. Burke. I need a job. Oh, see, I know, I know what that means. Just take care of yourself. Burke. Old friends. About your meeting with Burke. Do we have liftoff? No, he's feeling me out. Feeling you out? What does that mean? He's interested, but he thinks I might have lost my edge. And the chance for non stop booze a thon has given him second thoughts. I'm not to take that dead end act too far. 
Burke won't believe a top shelf operative fell into his lap. He's got to think I'm damaged goods or the story falls apart. Well, you better hope so, because the clock is ticking. If he walks away... I know what I'm doing, Strong. Stop second-guessing me from the sidelines. Sidelines. <laughs> Western, this investigation has taken up eight years of my life. It's dragged me across three continents, and it ended my marriage. And what does it all add up to? You, my friend. I'm doing the best I can. You know what? We have an agreement. My end of the deal was to save your friends. Your end was to take Burke down, not do the best you can, and that means you do whatever it takes. You understand? Operating under a cover ID, security options are limited. You can't exactly hire a guard or install an expensive alarm system if you're supposed to be barely scraping by. That means you have to improvise. Connecting a motion sensor in your apartment to a porch light, for example, can protect your home and protect your identity. It's also a good idea to find a place you can get into without using the front door. Most people don't go looking for second floor apartments with windows facing an alley, but in a pinch, there's nothing like it. Wow, you really don't learn. You are the one with the knife in the alley. Relax, Michael. Nobody's here to hurt you. You know, Michael, I almost didn't come tonight. Pablo made a pretty good case. Finding an operative like you cooling his heels in the DR is almost too good to be true. Glad to know I have a fan. So what are you doing here? I've got a soft spot for old friends, Mike. Tell me about the job. I'm ready. Slow down. You gotta make sure you're up to the task first. What was that supposed to mean? It means you're done with this lighter fluid. You're clean, starting now. Cold turkey. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can't do that. Oh, but you can. You just signed up for the world's most effective detox program, Mike. You take one more drink, I put a bullet in the back of your head. Huh, that's a little extreme, don't you think? Let me make one thing perfectly clear. I'm not just offering you a new job. I'm offering you a new life, Michael. In this new life, there's no second chances. Do you understand me? Yeah, I understand. Oh, Javi, just the guy I want to see. Did you talk to the caterer for Elsa's party? For the birthday thing? Did you guys get the cake? Yes, they deliver it Tuesday. So this is, um... Yeah, but she doesn't know, right? I mean, look, I'm counting on you here, okay? This is a covert op, my friend. This is top secret. Of course. I, uh... Actually, it came over because there's a man waiting for you in the members' lounge. He says it's important. It's concerning a friend of yours, a Michael Weston. Jean Fournier, Direction Générale de la Sécurité Extérieure. So, you're French in town. Yes, Thank you for meeting with me. Oh, it's no problem, but uh, I gotta be straight with you. I haven't seen Mike since last year. Oh. Well, perhaps it's uh, worth a discussion. In any case, it is a matter of great importance. My agency has been running a mission in the Dominican Republic. A new friend, Monsieur uh, Weston, has been observed working with some men that we believe to be extremely dangerous. Now, we need very urgently to know if he's there on a official business. <laughs> Look, I got no clue what Mike is up to. I mean, why are you coming to me? Let's resort, I'm afraid. We've contacted our friends at the CIA, but... <sighs> they would tell us nothing. Well, then, there's your answer. Monsieur X, your friend's life is in danger. If Weston is CIA, we do one thing. If you not, we do something else. Either way, if you tell us the truth, we can protect him. Okay, look. Have you spoken with Henri Labelle? I worked with him back in 98 when he ran counter intel for you guys. He's pretty tight with Langley, too. Well, yes, of course. Uh, Henri tried his best, but... Uh... Hmm. Clever. Miss your ex. There's no real bell, is there? <clears throat> Why are you asking questions about Mike? Who the hell are you, pal? I'm the man with the knife to your femoral artery. Let me go. Your girlfriend's beautiful place will get very bloody.
call you back. I'm a terrible friend. Yeah, you are. Happy to yeah, you do. But this is the worst time ever. This can't wait. Sam, I can't do this right now. Okay, our system was hacked today. Right, and I'm sure this fine young man can help you fix it later. We gotta no, talk. No, no, on, Nick. Nick, you stay right there. Nick, Nick stay. Nick, it's okay, buddy. Time for a ten minute break. Thank you, sir. What? I'm afraid Mike's in trouble. You heard from Mike? No, but a guy tried to stab me who came over asking questions about him. Asking questions? Australian guy? Glasses? Well, he had glasses, but this guy said he was with French intelligence. Did he? Yeah. My guy said he was in the diamond business, said he was uh, looking for a bodyguard with skills. He asked me if I still work with Mike. Well, then it's the same guy, just a different cover ID. Things are starting to make a little more sense now. Our system went down like five minutes after that guy left the building. Wait, are you saying that guy's your hacker? He's gotta be. Only question is, what the hell does he want with Mike? I don't know, but it's time to circle the wagons. Busy right now, Sam? Yeah, yeah, Fee, look, no matter what you're doing, I need you to put that on hold for a second, okay? I need you to meet me and Jesse at Carlitos and... I can't put it on hold, I'm on a job. I'm bringing in a skip. Can't Carlos handle this himself? Mm -hmm, this is a serious six-figure bad guy. You're gonna want to stop running right now, I'm telling you, I'm man! I'm not going back to jail! You're gonna regret that in about three seconds! Three! Come on. Carlos is a big boy, okay? He can handle this solo. Two! One! Oh, you bitch! No, no. It's just a bean background, and that's no way to talk to a lady. Are you okay? I'm back. Sam, what's going on? This better be important. If I'd known this was about Michael, I wouldn't have come. I haven't seen him in nine months, either of you. I have a life now. I have a, a new house, a new business, a new man. We totally feel you, V. We totally feel you. Sam and I are going to handle it. We're going to run the mystery guy down. We already got his plates from the security cameras at work. All we're asking is for you to just keep an eye on Maddie. That's it. That's it. She has enough on her mind right now. Charlie's custody hearing is tomorrow. Charlie? Maddie's getting custody in Ace Did I miss something? You guys don't tell me anything. Seriously. Ruth fell off the wagon. She's in rehab. She's not fit to mother. All the more reason to figure out who this guy is and what he wants. Because like it or not, Mike's enemies are our enemies. Fine. But I'm doing this for now. The concept of only sharing information that operatives need to know isn't just used by intelligence agencies. Terrorists use it too for the same reasons. It's a challenge when you're infiltrating a terrorist organization because it means you don't get to know exactly what you're part of until it's too late to do anything about it. This is insane. You want me to plant charges in a building I've never seen before? Now you've seen it. No, what I see is a place crawling with security. That's because it's a security firm, Michael. Defense contractor, too. Think of it as a Latin American version of Blackwater. Oh, Blackwater? And we're gonna go in there alone. That sounds safe. That's why he's here. He used to work with him. He knows his way around. He'll get you in. I don't see any guard logs, employee counts, no police response times. I mean, if you want this done right, I need more time. Michael, consider this a test of your ability to operate under challenging conditions. Are you two are gonna enter the building as weekend practitioners of the custodial arts. You'll have key cards. That'll get you past the guards. Once you're inside, Poplar will direct you to a high security room on the east end of the building. And that's where we plant the charges? Exactly. From there, you'll make your way out back. There'll be a vehicle waiting for you. If you have any trouble at that point, I'll be up there and cover you. And you still haven't said anything about what this job is. We're blowing something up. But well, what is that thing? Why are we blowing it up? Why you can't ask we ask too many questions? And maybe you don't ask enough. Either you're crazy or you're too dumb to care. Hey! Listen to me. This man is one of the bravest men I've ever met. He has risked his life for me more times than I can count. You will treat him with the respect he deserves. I know you have questions. You'll get your answers eventually. But that time is not now. I brought Michael on for a reason. You're to treat him like a member of this team. You understand? Good. We're on in three hours. One, two. We're up, we're up. Charlie Wesley slams one down and the crowd goes wild. Let's go. Oh, now put that thing away. Madeline, I told you, we have a situation. You're damn right we have a situation. My child services could make a home visit at any time. For God's sake, I quit soaking for this. One gun could ruin everything. It's just until Sam and Jesse find this guy. Why don't we just call the police? We can take care of it ourselves, just like we always do. That child lost both his parents. I will not let him lose me. Let us worry about any danger. You just worry about making sure you get to keep Charlie. There we go. Up, up. There he goes. Yes. 
It's Jesse. You gotta take it. Tell him to find that guy already. Any luck? Oh, no luck. All skill. I ran the guy's plates. He was driving a rental. Name on the credit card was Jack Marsden. Well, that can't be his real name. Well, of course not. You only used the card once, but here's why I'm a genius. I checked all the other cards issued by that company the same day. Found a J.P. Marsden who just used a brand new card to rent a house in Coconut Grove. A bam. You think he still lives there? Sam and I are heading over there right now. Smuggling anything into a secure building is all about misdirection. You can't keep alarms from going off or dogs from barking, but you can mask why it's happening. A metal detector can't differentiate between a Smith & Wesson 45 and a steel-sided floor polisher. The same way a bomb-sniffing German Shepherd doesn't know the difference between the smell of C4 and nitrogen-based fertilizers. We're at the door. Rear exit's clear. You got three minutes before that patrol car circles around again. Copy that. We don't have time for an interrogation. We'll use the explosive. We'll get through the door with a cutting charge. We've only got one detonator. Let me handle that. Just cover me. Pablo, please, we don't have time. Fine, let's do it quickly. C4 is the most popular military explosive mainly because it's extremely stable. That's great if safety is your main concern, but not so great if you're short of a detonator. When you have to improvise, a primary explosive like mercury fulminate mixed with gunpowder can provide the energy needed to set off a chunk of C4. Provided you can get them in place without blowing your hand off. Here. Burke, change of plans. We're coming out hot. Copy that. I'll be ready when you get them. Switch cars, radio silence until then. This is the place. Matches the address on the rental agreement. I don't see any cars. Looks empty. Maybe, maybe not. Here's the box and see if he's home. An easy way to tell if a house is occupied is to monitor the electricity usage with a non-contact voltage meter. You can do a quick check of the breaker box and see if anyone's got the lights on. Either he likes to sit silently in the dark or he's not in there. Good. Looking forward to surprising the son of a bitch when he gets back home. Oh, boy. You're a little fired up about this one, aren't you? He held a switchblade to a very sensitive region of Sam Axe that only Elsa and Sandino get to touch. What? Sandino's my masseur. TMI, sir. TMI. Once you're at the structure, the next step is getting in. The same portable voltage tester you use to measure electrical usage can also detect electrical currents, which means if you can get close to your target's doors and windows, you can tell if he's got an active alarm system with a wave of your hand. Okay, we're in. I thought you scanned the door. I did. I did, something just turned on. Can you see what it is? Of course, just because they don't have an alarm system doesn't mean you don't have to worry about less conventional forms of oh. security. Sam, don't move. Don't move, don't even 
can breathe. What is it? I don't know. You see the guy? Uh, it's a pretty safe bet that he's not home. People don't usually wire Claymore mine to their front door when they're just chilling inside. Did you say Claymore? Yeah. It's on a remote trigger. I think we just activated it. What? How? Oh, stop. stop. There's got to be something in the lock. It's probably set to go off when we turn the knob. Or when you let it go. Wait, 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 wait. When I turn the knob or let it go, which is it? I don't know. Just don't move. Don't twitch. Don't blink. Don't think. Excuse me, I'm here for the Charlie Weston custody case. Right this way. Mr. Emery is waiting for you in the conference room. I'm sorry, I thought I was meeting with Mr. Coyer. Actually, no. A supervisor from the state office came early this morning to handle your case. Why, is something wrong? No, no, it's probably just that your case is sensitive. Ah, Mrs. Weston. Hi there. Hello. I'm Warren Emery. So good to meet you. Thank you. Welcome. I must say, Mrs. Weston, based on the reports that I've seen, you're in a good position to move forward in your efforts to become your grandson's legal guardian. Thank you. I'm so relieved. Unfortunately, there is an issue that we haven't covered, and we're concerned. It may impact the suitability of the home environment for Charlie. Specifically, your son, Michael. Michael? He isn't... Michael should not be an issue. I have no contact with him. Hmm. I'm sorry, you have to understand. No, I understand. I really do, but the department, I'm afraid they won't, without some kind of an idea about your son's current status. I'm not supposed to talk about Michael. Mm. That's all I can then say. I'm afraid there's nothing more that we can do here. Sure, we can place Charlie in a foster care. No, please. Michael is working on a government assignment. That's all I can say. Hmm. Is this something you can uh, verify? Not exactly, but you could look up my arrest records from last year when I turned myself into the police. We were all released. Part of a deal that Michael had made with the CIA. That's excellent, Mrs. Weston. <laughs> I'm glad that we're making progress. Now, tell me more about this deal. How you doing there, Jesse? Getting a little wobbly here. No wobbling. Just give me a tool. Hang on. You call that a tool? What the hell are you going to do with that? I left my bomb robot at home, Sam. Can't disarm the thing. I'm going to try to change the blast radius. Can you give me some room to work here? I'm a little close to San Dino territory. As I recall, you told me not to move a muscle. I'm going to stick with that. Fair enough. Okay. Claymore mines are one of the most lethal anti-personnel devices in existence. The shrapnel inside can rip through the wall of a house and still be deadly up to 200 meters. But because a claymore is a directional charge, most of the blast is propelled forward. Which means if disarming it isn't an option, being behind it when it goes off is the next best thing, as long as you have adequate cover. Okay, we can't risk tipping it over. That's as far as it's gonna go. Is that enough? It should be. Should be. It should be, or it is. Should be is how bomb techs lose body parts. Okay, then it is. Are you lying to me? Maybe. I don't know. Just, just jump that way. Okay, jump far. Okay, you ready? No, I'm not ready. Hold on. Where you going? Hey! Somebody's got to take you to the hospital if this thing goes wrong, right? Hold on. Okay. That wasn't too bad, huh? You okay? Yeah. Next time, you're on lock duty. Next time, yeah. Let's see what this guy was so anxious to protect. Well, that's a hell of a way to redecorate. Nothing out this way. You see anything? Yeah, check this out. Looks like someone turned his kitchen into a fake ID factory. That must have been a boy scout. Looks like he prepped every kind of cover ID he could possibly need. Airport security. Building inspector. Here we go. He's even working up. What? What is it? Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Sammy, find anything? V, where are you? Well, I'm waiting for Madeline to finish her custody meeting. What's wrong? We just found a Department of Children and Families ID at the mystery man's house. What? He's in there, V. He's in the same room with Maddie right now. Get over there. Where is the Madeline Weston custody meeting? The evaluation. Where is she? In the conference room at the end of the hall. Madeline, do you 
Yeah, what are you doing back here? Where is the man you were talking with? Mr. Emery, he left for Tallahassee, but it's good news. He's going to recommend that I get custody. Did he ask you anything about Michael? What exactly did you tell him? Oh, my God. <laughs> Wouldn't steal a car that had air conditioning? I chose one that wouldn't stand out. You want comfort or you want to get through this police checkpoint? You cover your leg. A new car won't do us much good if the cops see fresh blood from a bullet wound. Hey, you just worry about driving, okay? Bueno. Yeah, it's good. If you work in covert operations long enough, you develop a sixth sense for when your cover has been blown. Now, don't worry. I'll take care of it. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Who was that? Spork, checking in. I thought we weren't supposed to talk until the rendezvous. Yeah, well, I guess he decided to change the plan. When you think you might have been compromised, it pays to trust your instincts. After all, the only way you know for sure your cover has been blown is when someone puts a bullet in the back of your head. You should probably give me your gun. If the cops don't buy our story, I'm going to have to shoot our way out of this. You have a gun. Which I'd love to use, but I'm out of ammo. Remember? Saving your ass back there? Listen, if we run into trouble, I'll handle it, okay? You're injured. Look, this is crazy. It was crazy. It's me giving my gun to a traitor. Yeah, that's right. I know the truth. That call? That was my friend of mine in Miami. We just found out you still work for the CIA. Hands on the wheel, man. Yeah, um, I don't know who your friend is, but they've got bad information. From your own mother, then they hope. You try anything, you die. Hold them on. Uh, touristas. Going to Bahia Bay. Bahia Bay. That's fishing. Pescados. Fish, fish. Names and hotel where you stay. at a checkpoint. Cops started asking questions. Pablo, he, he panicked. Pulled a gun. I tried to get us out of there, but he suffered. Tell oh, you truth, Michael. Cops fired at the car. Headshot. He died instantly. You need to know we lost a hero today. And this mission continues only because of what he did. You understand? I just wish I could have saved him. I'm sure you did all you could, Michael. I'm gonna go away for a few days. I'll be in touch, but I want you to keep a low profile until I get back. You stay strong, Michael. And be ready. So you've been a busy boy. Apparently, you blew up about $20 million of satellite decryption equipment yesterday. Any idea why? No, but it's probably something bigger, a lot bigger. Burke was clear about that. What about my cover? We have a serious problem. Someone's been asking around Miami about you. You think Burke knows? No, or I'd be dead. Pablo said the Miami contact was his, not Burke's. But whoever he is, he won't keep a secret forever. Which is why I'm headed stateside to clean this up. When's Burke supposed to make contact again? Not for at least another 48 hours. That's gotta get close, but we don't have much choice. I need someone in Miami to hit the ground running, so you're coming with. I'll need to contact Sam and Jesse. Yeah, I don't contact anybody. This isn't a class reunion. You get seen in Miami, our whole op is over. We go in, we stay in the shadows. No one knows we're there. We find the son of a bitch, we put him in the ground. You understand the stakes, right? I understand it's him and me. 